Welcome to. I'm not pulling, making you, but I'm just saying there's there's room up front if you can't see or hear me well in the back. Henry, good to see you. Amen. I uh, uh, James chapter one, verse nineteen. James one, verse nineteen. At times when we read the Word of God, we, we'll pick up on, like the book of James, there's a little bit of an argument. Tom, are you trying to get a head start on me? All right. That's good. You're learning. You stay standing. No, you're doing good. I'll, you found it. That's good. That's even better. You don't know how many people stand up that are just faking with their Bibles open. Eh? They never find it, you know. They don't, they don't know where it's at. Some, some don't know if it was... Uh, James the disciple who died in around 44 AD or was it James the brother of Jesus the road James who died around 62 63 AD both died deaths of martyrdom the whole issue of James though is simple this one little simple fact that I understand and that's that if you hang out with Jesus the one thing that you should do is talk less Listen more and calm down. I told you I'm preaching to me. Talk less, listen more, calm down. Now, as a kid, I would hear the phrase, we need more TLC. Of course, that was tender love and care. Don't fall for that. That ain't what we need more of. What we need more of is talking less, listening more, and calm down. As we hit this political season, talk less, listen more, calm down. As we get closer to the end times of the coming of Christ and things are all screwed up, talk less, listen more, calm down. Somebody say you're preaching to yourself, Pastor. Because y'all don't need any of this. Your kids don't need it. The know-it-alls you work with don't need it. The one who's calling right now on the phone don't need it. <laughs> Talk less. Listen. 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 Everybody needs a little TLC, shall you hear it? Talk less. Calm. Oh, there it is. Listen more. Calm down. Are you comfortable? When James, the book of James was written, he condemned various sins, including pride, hypocrisy, favoritism, slander. He encourages and implores believers to humbly live by being godly rather than worldly wisdom and to pray in all situations. You know, Paul fought against people who thought the grace was not enough. And he taught about grace. But then James comes along and teaches about works. He had the flip side which teaches us balance. Faith without works is dead. Show me your faith by how you live your life. So he says in James 1.19, my dear brothers, and remember, they're in persecution. They're, they're, the Christians are being slaughtered. They're, they're you know, again, the, uh, not just the, they're turning wild beasts loose on them in the Colosseums. Uh, they're putting down the teachings of Christ. And so those who walk with Jesus understood they knew who he was. And he said, brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, which means calm down. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. The Message Bible says it like this. Post this at all the intersections, dear friends. Lead with your ears. Follow up with your tongue. And let your, uh, let, and let your anger straggle along the rear. Sometimes you got to leave the anger in the back. Amen? Amen. God's righteousness does not grow from human anger. We live in a time of such information explosion. I remember in the 80s, I would hear that the next generation or the next, uh, uh, it wouldn't be in the industrial age. We were going to be in the information age. And I thought, how, how is that? And then the Internet popped in, and, and we went from wearing a pager 
to uh, getting a cell phone like a walkie-talkie to the flip phone and then to this smartphone that's smarter than all of us. And, and I, I look at it. I, I read recently that over 100 billion emails are sent out each day. That's more than 10 times the population of the whole world. Each day, 5,000 new books are published. This year, the number of text messages will exceed 6 trillion. Look at the one next to you and say, it's your fault. Right. <laughs> 6 trillion. When text messages first came out, I refused to text because I wanted to say something to people. Then I realized what a joy it was not to have to say something to people. If we take the year Christ was born as a starting point, it took 1,500 years for all the knowledge in the world to double. The next doubling took only 250 years. It doubled again 150 years later by the end of World War II. Knowledge doubled every 25 years. Today, knowledge is doubling every 12 months. Doesn't mean we're smarter. It just means it's doubling. We can't keep up. We can't keep up with it. We are being swamped by a tidal wave of information that pours out 24-7, 365 days of the year. The whole world is now live and in real time. Yeah. It's all about that. Stories change every few minutes. And the screen you're watching may have an anchor reading the story with an image to the right, a sidebar to the left, and with a screen crawl at the bottom, amen, to tell us what's coming up next. Five different information pumping at you. I can't keep up with it. I hit pause. Stare at it, read it, start it. You do that? I mean, I'm I can't keep up with it. It's a different day. We are easily distracted. We look without seeing. We listen without hearing. We speak without understanding. We are wired up, tuned in, and a hyper-caffeinated generation. We've learned how to make a living, but not a life. We've added years to life, but not life to years. We've been all the way to the moon and back, but have trouble crossing the street to meet a new neighbor. Yeah, on, we conquered outer space, but not inner space. We've done larger things, but not better things. Come on. Father, thank you for your word. Help us, God, to understand, to talk less, to listen more, to calm down. In Jesus' name. And everyone say Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Be seated. It is a tremendous challenge. We're talking about outer space, and this inner space I'm talking about is us. Inside of us, you know, the greatest challenge is the person in the mirror. It's the person you deal with every day. Amen. Uh, uh, when I read the enemy, he's in me. He's in a me. And what we are on the inside matters more than what happens on the outside. When I look at the book of James, it is so incredibly relevant today. This little epistle written 2,000 years ago to a beleaguered, scattered, oppressed Jewish believers who were just barely hanging on to their faith speaks with amazing clarity to life in the 21st century. James wants us to discover the freedom that comes when we respond the right way to the pressures of life. Again, know this, my beloved brothers, that every person be quick to hear be slow to speak slow to anger for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God it's a simple verse and you've got to understand in this day when James is talking the word of God was not easily distributed as a matter of fact you had to memorize it and then say it to someone so they would gather in the crowd and somebody would say hey this is what we need to do listen quit talking so much and calm down and the next one, memorize James 1.19 and share it with somebody else. It was important. But this day, the day we've got is so much different. I sometimes think our modern technology has made it so easy to hear the word of God. We hardly hear it at all. When I, I look at my phone, I see tons of apps on it. Whew. You see apps for something you ate before you ate. Now you look at them, it's brimming with information, it's flowing 24 hours a day. I've got news apps, email apps, message apps, music apps, food apps, Uber apps. i got grandchildren's game apps. Yeah. If you're a grandparent, you know how important it is to have them little grandkid apps on there. We have enough online stimulation to keep us occupied around the clock. And I wonder who's better off. The first century believers who had almost no copies of the word or 21st century believers who have the Bible at our fingertips in so many different translations. No one would trade our technology for like 2,000 years ago. But I say this, technology is useless and even dangerous. If we're so busy and so distracted that we're not quick to hear what God is saying to us. Every time I turn around, somebody is walking. They're walking with a phone and fixing to walk right out in front of a car. And they have. They've taken selfies and fallen off cliffs. And you will. 
Amen. In, in, in this age, you've got to learn how to manage this little tool that we've got and learn how to listen. Everybody say listen. Yeah. Amen. So first, we, we got to talk less. Talk less. Some people talk so much they never hear what everybody else is saying. This week we read Psalm, uh, Proverbs chapter 8. And Proverbs chapter 8 tells us that wisdom has been here since the beginning. Wisdom was here before the earth was created. Yeah. Wisdom showed up before the heavens. Now, in the, the scripture even personalizes it. Cause wisdom a sheep. Come on, my brothers. God put wisdom around you. Listen to her. Can I get an amen? amen. Verse 1 of Proverbs 8, she's calling out. Verse 6, she speaks noble things. Verse 10 and 11, wisdom is better than gold or silver. Matter of fact, Scripture said better to have wisdom than to have gold, than to have silver. If you can get wisdom. The book of James says if you want wisdom, ask for it. I have learned that what happens to us as adults, we get older and we forget to ask. But our children never forgot. They always ask it. They're going to ask as long as they can receive Amen. I think some of us don't think we receive anymore. We got to keep asking. If you need wisdom, God give me wisdom when it comes to this thing we're dealing with. Wisdom gains favor from the Lord. Verse 35. He blesses those who walk in wisdom. By wisdom, kings reign. Amen. But no one gains wisdom by chance. Wisdom says if you seek me, you have to come and find me. We're too busy. We're too worried. We're too preoccupied. We're too distracted in every modern problem to seek the wisdom God offers in the world. I made up my mind 16 years ago. I'm tired of being busy. Tired of being busy. I don't want to be busy no more. And people will call and say, Pastor, I know you busy. I ain't been busy in 16 years. I know. I'm very effective. I decide what I'm going to do, and I'm going to get it done. I've learned that life needs margins. Amen. See this on the over There's no margins there. And when there's no margins there, it gets too busy. It gets too uh, messy on the sides. You've got to start pushing back and say, you know what? I've got to save a little room for me. I got to save a little room to get my head right, got to get my body right, got to get my spirit right. I can't just let life run all the way to the ends. If you're not careful, people will find out you do something, they'll keep you doing something all the time. Right. Amen. I used to hear if you want something done, find somebody who's busy. They can get it done for you. The issue is changing the way you think. If I can change to this fact that I just want to be effective today, I want to get done the thing. And I go to bed at night the most peaceful because I did exactly what I want because there's always something else added. Yesterday, I went out of the hospital to pray for a little boy named Chris. I mean, if you know about Chris, he had a virus attack his brain three or four years ago. He played out at the ranch. He ran all over the place when he was uh, eight or nine. Now he's 11. He's down to 80 pounds. His body is given away. His, it, it, the virus took his legs. He's taking his arms. I tell him to smile. He got one side of his lip right there. You know, but he knows who I am. We talked. So I went down to the hospital to visit with him. Texas children. While I was there, Ronnie, I saw your grandkid case, you know, and he got to pray with him. But the issue was not, was not either one of those boys. The issue was that was me being effective. But watch this. When I turned to walk away, I got a nudge from somebody, a uh, uh, recent and, uh, and Katie said, hey, look back there. And I turned around, and, and there was a, a lady who has crying. And she watched me pray over Case. And as she sees me praying over Case, I know my mistake, Angie. I caught it. Amen. And, and, and as she's praying over Case, <laughs> y'all don't think I do, I do. Uh, as, I prayed on, as I'm praying over Case, she saw it. She didn't have a preacher. She didn't have anyone. And she said, would you pray over my daughter? I walked over, and here's this little 11-year-old Janelle, gorgeous girl, having some type of stomach issues. They're going to have surgery. She's scared as she can be. And, I, and me and Richard and who, was, who else was it? Uh, Jill was with me, and we, we bent over the bed and began to pray for her. And I thought, and as I was walking away, I told Richard, I said, this is why we came. You know, I wanted to come see these two little boys, but, but this and here kind of entered in. See, that, that's leaving yourself some margin. That's leaving yourself some space because you never know what else is going to pop in in life. And so James is telling us here in life where as you move through it, you got to learn how to talk less. Everybody say, talk less. Amen. Be slow to speak, Ecclesiastes 5 2. So we got to listen up, we got to talk less. God is in heaven. And you are on earth, therefore lift, let your words be few. Ecclesiastes 5.2. It's hard to argue with that. See, what I found in life is, is we're not as smart as we think we are. 
We're not as clever as we think we are. We're not as wise as we think we are. That's why the scripture tells us to keep asking. There is a time to speak and there's a time to be silent. Most of us are better at the former than not so good at the latter. Proverbs 29, 20 says, Do you see a man who speaks in haste? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Let me give you a little info here. To keep your marriage brimming with love in the loving cup. Whenever you're wrong, admit it. Whenever you're right, shut up. Will that work? Just a little help there. Most time folk write, they won't shut up about it. It's because they finally got one right. It's so easy to kill a marriage of friendship with unkind words. How many times have we said something in anger only to regret it a thousand times later? You have to pause to make an application that I would not have made probably 25 years ago. But social media encourages such quick feedback. If you don't text me back quickly, I think you're mad at me. I got to hear back from you. Remember the day before. Some of you will remember the day. Some of you even date back. I, I, I saw where guy, one guy, uh, one little granddaughter posted. She said, Grandpa, you're older than the internet. <laughs> Bold as a bunch of us in here older than the internet. Yeah. Amen. We were around long, but, but, but our grandkids don't pick up on that. They don't see that. They think it's always been around. Someone says something we don't like, so without... Thinking we post a snappy reply, a snarky comment, a clever comeback, or a mean-spirited innuendo. Sometimes we are so eager to post our comments that we hit sin and then start chuckling over our cleverness. Don't think about that that was not real smart. Or it didn't turn out the way I thought. I, was, I didn't say it the way I thought I was going to say it. I, I can tell you that this, this guy, you know, he, he commits suicide up in a jail. And, and while he was in the jail committing suicide, I saw somebody post about it and said, hey, it's okay. The FBI and CIA is going to investigate it. You know they'll get it right. Yeah. And I saw where somebody commented below that. And, and, and this dear friend of mine, she said, well, you know, the CIA, uh, they, they assassinated the, the Kennedys. Now, I'm looking at this, and this is a very bright person that wrote this. Now, I'm thinking, I better look this word up because I've been a lot of things in life, but I've never been assassinated in my life that I know of. <laughs> so I comment back to her, did you say that? And she said, dang, spell check. <laughs> I mean, no, you can't blame everything on spell check. <laughs> Be careful before you hit that button. Hey, Amen. you got to learn to talk less, listen more. Oh, somebody catching this today. Amen. Listen, when James says, be slow to speak, he's thinking about our tendency to speak when we are angry and frustrated. I'm sure you've heard it said, speak when you are angry and you'll make the best speech you'll ever regret. It's true. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. It's not true. It's a nice saying. It's a brave saying if you can say it, but words pretty well. If you have no feelings... Mm -hmm. But if you do have feelings, words hurt more than sticks and stones. And the wounds, my friend, they take too long to heal. Calm down. Somebody say calm down. Calm down. See, this is my issue. I, I like aggression. I like positive. I like offensive. I like moving. I like, that's my life. That's just been my life for, from the beginning. And so he says, slow down. Be slow to anger. The translator said it like this. Be slow to wrath. Slow to use, lose your temper. James is not saying don't get angry. That's unrealistic. Anger is a part of our emotions. We're all going to get angry from time to time. But the word translated here, anger, refers to a deep-seated rage. It doesn't refer to a passing moment of displeasure, which is soon gone and forgotten. No, James is speaking of that deep emotion, which when released is like a volcano erupted. It spews red-hot lava all over the living room. I'm tired of people telling me, well, I can't control it. Anger can be controlled. Anger is an emotion. I'll prove it to you. You get in an argument with your spouse or your children and you start raising your voice and you say, no good, yada, 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 and all of a sudden your phone rings. Hello? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? Oh, man, we good around here. All oh, thanks for rocking. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thanks for fine. Uh-huh. Well, man, I'll pray about that. Oh, I'll, I'll agree with you in Jesus' name. All that text. Uh huh. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Now listen. Where was I? You saw it. I promise you right now, I'm gonna drink a blood hole in you. Don't be. Anger can be 
be controlled. It's an emotion. The scripture says, be angry, sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. It's okay to get a little upset. But after a little bit here, you got to calm Notice the progression. If you're quick to hear, you'll be slow to speak. But if you're slow to hear, we will doubtless be quick to speak. Quick speaking leads to quick anger. The anger we get, the angrier we get, the faster we speak, the less we hear. You won't even slow down. Take a breath. Trying to prove your point. You got these two little outfits over in Portland arguing with each other. Nobody wins. Sometimes you've got to talk less, listen more, calm down. Proverbs 16, 32 says, Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Solomon is saying here, slow to anger is better than the mighty. You, you'll take a city if you can learn to do this. Solomon is saying for us to control your temper. Amen. We use that military imagery all the time in our, our Christian circles. We talk about taking our cities for Jesus, winning America back to God. That sort of talk, you know, if you're not careful, I took my city for God, but my children no longer follow Jesus. Hmm. I want my kids to follow Christ. James 1.20, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. One version says it like this. If you're angry, you cannot do any of the good things that God wants done. You ever know a person who's angry all the time? They get up angry. They shower angry. They, they eat angry. They go to work angry. They come home angry. They watch TV angry. They go to bed angry. When they're happy, that makes them angry. Nothing pleases a person like that. It's like the guy with the old dog laid outside. And every time he walked by the old dog, the dog was growling. Just growling. He said, why does your dog growl? He said, he's laying on a cuckoo burr. He said, well, why don't, why don't you reach in there and take it away? He said, every time I try, he growls. He would rather lay on a cuckoo burr. A lot of people are that way. They know what it is agitating them, but they don't want to remove it because it gives them attention. That sort of anger can never produce life pleasing to God. That sort of anger only destroys. It never builds up. Jesus, you know, Jesus didn't come to make us nicer people. He didn't do it. He came to make us new people. He, he came to make us alive people. Amen. He came to set us free. You know, I, I should try harder to listen more, speak less, calm down. That's good. But it misses the point here. We need Jesus living in us. I remind myself, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. And when you got Christ in you and you got Jesus around you, you need to talk less. Oh, that's so hard. It's so hard. I, I'm, I'm so frustrated. With, and I love this nation. I love our kids. But as we move toward this, all this political things, I, 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 I'm very, I just want to post biblical things, but I do know this much. Eventually, I'm going to say something. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to protest something. Eventually, I'm going to say that's wrong. I, I have uh, some friends that just opened a barbecue joint in St. Louis. Oh, yeah. Built a new building called The Beast. Tremendous barbecue. In so doing, the powers that be came in and said, you can't have a he, a male, and a female bathroom. It's got to all be gender friendly. Now, I'm thinking, okay, California, but now we're in St. Louis, Missouri. So this thing is sweeping across. He said, excuse me. And he said, yeah, you got. So he had to build this, this, this room where you go in and wash your hands and then these cubicles where anyone that wants to go in, it can. So if, if she feels like a he that day, she can go in that bathroom. Let me just help you just a little bit. We need men's bathrooms. In women's bathrooms. Now, well, hold on. Hey, well, yes. The reason why, ladies, <laughs> then women won't come in the men's bathroom. Listen, we pee on the lid. <laughs> now, that may sound crass to you, but if I go into one of them bathrooms, I'm going to make sure they know I was there. Because that's the most foolish, asinine stuff I've ever heard in my life. 
for you to say to yourself today, I feel like a female or a female feel like a male. But yeah, where did, and it's like a spirit that's moved across this nation that has grabbed hold of the, the, the judges, the lawyers, and everybody seizing on this. Why, why can't people see the harm this is doing to our children? The confusion, and, you know, they, they think they, they pansexual, bisexual, this sexual. Uh, you, you're, you're so screwed up. And then our kids are getting this poured onto them. And I know some of you as parents, you've got kids that are struggling with this. I know that. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm making light of a serious situation. But the bottom line is, how, how do we, we got to break this thing. And so here I get all beat up. And the word of God said, calm down. Calm down. It's like Jesus is telling me, we are in the last days. This is going to happen. I want to rescue our kids. I want to see them. And, and, and again, parents, you still love them. My kids have done some of this. Sometimes they'll come to me and say, Dad, do you really want to know? I'll be like my mom and find out later when you get born again. I don't, I don't want to hear it right now. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. Amen. But, but they do. And so as a parent... As a believer, as a pastor, I got to talk less. Now, I know talking's my business, is what I do. So I got to talk right to them. If peeing bothered you a while ago, I could have been worse. <laughs> I know I'm probably going to lose viewers. Mm. No, they won't, I, won't, I won't lose viewers. I'll get more. It happens that way, when you're honest. Uh, talk less listen more when we were with Sister Ann last week I didn't want to talk I wanted to listen when I, I went and visited Janie after that a couple of us David and Richard and us, we went to see, visit Miss Janie I just want to listen Brother Haley was alive I just wanted to listen there are some people in here that have been through some wars if you're younger than them, particularly, listen, listen, amen. They'll help you through life. I know you feel like you know it all, but there'll come a time in life when you'll realize how dumb you are. And you wish you listened. Not only that, one day they'll be off the scene. And you'll never get a chance to hear their voice again. Listen now. Stand with me if you would. So in your anger, when you get mad... According to the book of Ephesians, do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Husband and wife, it's good practice. I know sometimes it's hard to do. I often will use this phrase, biblically, if, it's, if it can be done biblically, the truth of the matter is, sometimes that's hard. So the word tells you, don't, don't let it, because it will. It'll go down and it'll fester inside of you. And anger that's not dealt with properly turns to bitterness, bitterness to hatred. So, be careful with this. If, you, if you're mad at me, deal with it. If I'm mad at you, I'm going to deal with it. You have to deal with it. Do not give the devil a foothold. Because he uses anger. He uses unforgiveness. Amen. He uses bitterness. He'll get hold of you. A foothold means like you put your foot in a trap. You can be going along be the sweetest person in the world. And somebody say something to you or park next to you. Or wave at you wrong. And all of a sudden, they got a foothold. You mad. You upset. Good decisions determine success. And you make good decisions by having experience. You get experience from bad decisions. I've learned a lot of ways not to do something. Thomas Edison. He had something to do with a light bulb. The ability to learn from your mistakes will ensure you don't repeat them. When you're living for Jesus, and Jesus is living within you, then by God's grace, we will be able to talk less. Listen more. Calm down. What does this church need? TLC. We need more. Amen. And keep spreading it out a little bit more. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. I want to ask God to give you understanding and revelation. I want all of us to get understanding and revelation. I want our minds opened up. 
Jesus said, if you need wisdom, ask for it. Said it through the book of James, the man James. If you need wisdom. Listen, if you're struggling financially, you need wisdom. If you're struggling with relationships, you need wisdom. If you're struggling with your health, you need wisdom. Amen. We need wisdom. If you need wisdom, be honest about it. Throw both hands in the air. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I'm asking for wisdom. In my finances, in my relationships, with my health, my spiritual walk, who I hang out with, God, give me wisdom. When it comes to training, my children and grandchildren, give me wisdom. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of arguing. Give me wisdom. Help me talk less. Listen more. Calm down. In Jesus' name. Amen. One last little principle that I've learned to live by. Whatever you cannot change, don't let it change you. Sometimes I feel like I can't change my kids. I'm not going to let my kids change me. Sometimes I feel like there's certain friends of mine I can't change. I can't let them change me. The things about this, I know that there are things that I can't change. So I work on that. But when I can't change, what happens if politics switches? Yeah. I tell my pastor this morning, do, here in Texas, I just be straight up with you. Don't touch our guns. It's just, I understand, but I'm going to agree with our president. It's, it's a mental issue. It's, 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 I'll go past that. It's a spiritual issue. He can't say that. I can't. It's a spiritual issue. We got people whose minds are so twisted, perverted, and demon-possessed or oppressed that they, whether it be a gun, an F-150, or, or, or a knife, they're going to harm somebody. Yeah. I want to be the guy at Walmart with a gun to stop a guy with a gun. But on the flip side, calm down. All it takes is one good shot. You don't have to come out there with a submachine gun. You'll hurt somebody. You learn to shoot your 38 well. You're 22 or you're 45. Just learn how to shoot well. And if you don't have one, just to be honest, duck. Just duck. People ask me all the time, Pastor, is it you good with me carrying a gun? Well, you got a CHL? You know how to use it? But don't, don't let people see it. Yeah. Dumbest thing in the world is for somebody to know you've got a gun. That's just common sense. If I see you with a gun, I know you're the one I'm going to come after first. You bad sucker, he is. Yeah. Respect it. Be seated. Servant leaders are coming up. David will be coming up, but i got to make a few observations for you. Starting the month of September, we're going to have first week midweek. Every first week, we'll have midweek. After that, there will be Kingdom Connections for you. The Kingdom Connections, of course, are going to be for the, 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 the ladies. Already, today after service, there's a ladies connection meeting. Uh, Sister Diane, we're going to show a little video about your upcoming retreat, which should be a ladies connection, a Kingdom Connection. We're going to have a roundtable meeting in the month of September at Stephen Burgess's. I'm going to invite all the men going to the roundtable meeting to bring your shotgun. Why go to Stephen Burgess's house if you don't have a shotgun? He owns the finest skeet range in Texas. Amen. So we'll eat, we'll pray, we'll fellowship, we'll shoot something. That's the round table. So these meetings will be taking place. Speed is going to get together, Dennis, with, with uh, the, uh, the out, uh, the misfits, the off-road misfits. I want to call them the mudders. Who said, <laughs> but the, those that are four-wheel drive going to get together, going to have a meeting. And they're going to have teaching time and fellowship time. So this, uh, Marie's going to have a, a special spark meeting next month. And so within those three weeks, so the first week, midweek, we want you here. And then outside of that, those kingdom connections, we're going to tell you where we're going to be meeting, 
There'll be sign up so that the leaders know to get hold of you. We want you to connect. This is, a, you know, I love coming to church, but we're not connecting with everybody. So we got to connect out of this church with people and invite people to come to the connection. Amen? If you need an offering envelope, if you're giving by phone, wave your phone at them. Say, no, you're giving and not punking them. Everybody here that considers himself a partner and a member here, be a tither. Be a giver. Amen. All right. How about we start off with that video, Miss Cheryl? <laughs> 